In this video, I'll prove the product rule and the quotient rule, along with one more related rule called the reciprocal rule. First, the proof of the product rule. To find the derivative of the product f of x times g of x, I'm going to start, as usual, with the limit definition of derivative. So it's the limit as h goes to 0 of f of x plus h g of x plus h minus f of x g of x all over h. Now I'd like to make this expression here look more like the expression above it, which is where I'm heading for. And to do this, I'm going to use a classic trick of adding 0 to my expression in kind of a devious way. So I'm going to rewrite my expression leaving the first term and the last term of the numerator as they are, but inserting two new terms that cancel. So I'm subtracting the term f of x g of x plus h, and then adding it back again, so that I won't change the value of my expression. This is not as pointless as it seems, because now I can factor out the common factor of g of x plus h from the first two terms and the common factor of f of x from the next two terms. So I'm going to do that. And now I'll rewrite again, splitting up my sum into two pieces here. You can use just algebra of fractions to see that this expression here and this expression here are the same. Notice that I'm taking the limit of this entire expression here. Now my limit rules allow me to rewrite this limit as four separate limits, provided that these four limits do in fact exist, which I'll tell you, show you in a moment that they do. So this first limit here is just equal to g of x because g is a continuous function. g is continuous because by assumption it's differentiable, so it has to be continuous. This second limit here you'll recognize as the definition of the derivative of f. So that limit exists and equals d dx of f of x. The third limit, well, f of x has nothing to do with h, so that limit is just f of x. And finally, the fourth limit is the derivative of g. And we've done it. Well, modulus some minor rearrangement, you'll see that this expression here is exactly the same as this expression here, just with the order of the terms switched around. Before we go on to prove the quotient rule, it'll be really handy to prove the reciprocal rule, which states that the derivative of a reciprocal, 1 over f of x, is given by negative the derivative of f of x divided by f of x squared. So to prove this fact, let's start, as usual, with the definition of derivative. So the derivative of 1 over f of x is the limit as h goes to 0 of 1 over f of x plus h minus 1 over f of x over h. Now these fractions here are just crying out to be combined by finding a common denominator. That common denominator is f of x plus h times f of x. So let me do that. I've just multiplied the first fraction by f of x over f of x and the second fraction by f of x plus h over f of x plus h in order to rewrite with a common denominator. So that gives me f of x minus f of x plus h divided by f of x plus h times f of x. And instead of dividing this whole thing by h, I'll multiply it by 1 over h, which gives me another factor of h in the denominator. Now, this expression here is looking a lot like the derivative of f. It's just in the reverse order. So let me factor out a negative sign in order to let me switch that order here. 
So this becomes f of x plus h minus f of x over h. And then I've got the times 1 over f of x plus h times f of x. Now I can split this limit up. First I'll factor out the negative sign and then I'll write this product as a product of two limits, which I can do provided the component limits exist. And I'll check that these limits do exist. Let's see. The first limit here, the first limit here is just the derivative of f. And the second limit here exists because f is continuous. f is continuous since it's differentiable. So by continuity, as h is going to 0, since x plus h is approaching x, f of x plus h is just approaching f of x. And I can rewrite this limit as 1 over f of x times f of x. And so this is, in other words, negative the derivative of f of x divided by f of x squared. And we've proved the reciprocal rule. Now we're in a great position to prove the quotient rule with very little effort. So instead of going back to the definition of derivative this time, I'm just going to think of the quotient f of x over g of x as a product of f of x times the reciprocal of g of x. And now, by the product rule, that's just the first function times the derivative of the second plus the derivative of the first times the second. And by the quotient rule, the derivative of this reciprocal is negative derivative of g over g of x squared. And I still have this second term here, which I'm just going to write as derivative of f of x divided by g of x. OK, so we're almost there. If we combine these two fractions using a common denominator of g of x squared, we just have to multiply this second fraction by g of x over g of x to get that common denominator. Now we get negative f of x times the derivative of g of x plus the derivative of f of x times g of x divided by g of x squared. And hopefully, this bottom expression is the same as this top expression. And yes, after rearranging the terms, it is. So that's the end of the proof of the quotient rule. So this video gave proofs of the product rule, the reciprocal rule, and then the quotient rule.